Welcome back to Mailbag. A very interesting, fun-filled, some would say political first half of Mailbag there. But, you know, we talk about the topics. We deal with these topics head on. We're going to go into the second half of Mailbag now. And once again, thank you so much for all your questions you've sent in. I'm going to go to one from Foxy. I don't know what Foxy's getting at here, Dave and Pete, but I'm going to ask it anyway. I think he's got an ulterior motive with this question. But Foxy asks, would you ever or have you ever had a second personal Twitter account? If you did, what would you use it for? Forces of good or evil? I did once um, start one up and I made one tweet and then I got rid of it. I just couldn't be bothered, didn't have the time anymore. But you know the um, you know the wrestling games on on the on the PlayStation where you used to yeah, create yeah. you don't used to create your own wrestler. And yeah. um, when I created, whenever I used to create mine to go and win all the titles and whatever, I used to, for some reason I don't know why I don't know where to come from. I used to call them Clint Class. So I created the Twitter account of Clint Class. And he was from um what's the bit just after just after Crosby? Um in in the uh oh god, what's it called? He was from Ince Blundell, that's where he was from. He was from Ince Blundell and he was um he was a farmer from Ince Blundell. So that was my Twitter account that lasted about five days. So you've got some incest and thoughts in your head. I, you oh, know mate, that? mate. It was when I was at uni and I just like had you know when you t- you know when it's like at uni, you've got loads of time on your hands, and I just thought, yeah. why not? But yeah, that was me one and only one tweet burner account, uh yeah. Pete. Have you? And if you I, haven't, what would you use it for if you did? Oh, you've got to use it for force of evil, haven't you? Surely. Yeah, yeah. You've got to. I mean, there's no. I mean, that's, there's something to be said though. Like I, I occasionally, especially with all this crap that's been going on off the pitch, like I occasionally get into it with like these, um, like Leicester fans or 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 Leeds fans or Copites or like there's this one fella who's like a Spurs fan who's obsessed with Everton, and I like to get into them with sometimes about this, you know, the PSR thing, and basically rip them into oblivion to the point where they block me. Um, and I keep it very sort of civil, do you know what I mean? I try to, I, I know what I'm doing. I like to wind people up on it, but by being really like, not by not reacting, if you know what I mean, sometimes that's the best way to deal with trolls is by basically just completely ignoring what they're saying and just being really nice to them, but just being right, do you know what I mean? So eventually they just get bored of me and block me. But I, I feel like if I had another account, it'd be handy to be able to keep an eye on what they're saying. Do you know what I mean? Because occasionally, like, what pisses me off is that sometimes when you're in an argument and then someone will reply to you and you've got, like, the perfect reply to them and before you get a chance to reply, they block you. And that annoys me. There's something really... So I feel like at some point I'm going to have to make a burner account just so I can I can say, like, oh, you haven't got rid of me yet. <laughs> so I, I, think, I think as well, if you're one of them people who gets wound up easily, like, I'm gonna, yeah. I, and I don't... I so don't it's mean, not like, you, is it? Well, I, I don't mean when I say when I say get wound up easily. I, I I scroll through with some of like what the politicians have said and things like that when I read or some of the stuff of you know what happens with regards to us this season with the points and all that, and it'll annoy me. So I I I think to myself I'm not letting it ruin me day. But you know when you you physically I'm talking about the people who physically have to go and reply and 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 have to get into an argument. Those people, if if you get wound up by comments like that then Twitter's obviously, you know, like, and I, and, and I think that's what a burner account's perfect for. For like you said, Pete, just being nice and just being sarcastic and being, just winding them up so that they keep getting enraged because if they can't, if they haven't got the ability or the skill set to take themselves away from that situation, then more fool them. Um, Dave, what about you? Have you got one? And if you, if you haven't, <laughs> what are you using it for if you did have one? Um, it's hard to answer this question, you know. Uh, Why? Because you've got a second one. Give it, but I'm giving away. <laughs> well, I'm giving oh, I am, away. I am, I am going to. I am going to. Are you the one, one? Are you the one? Are you the one who keeps saying links in, links in in my bio? Is that you? Is it? What? What are you talking <laughs> about? Yeah. Re- one who replies to every every post and says links in bio. Is that you? Is it? Yeah. I got. I got. I recently got accused for having a porn related one. Right. Because you know, and, and but no, I haven't, right? And, and <laughs> yeah. the other, we'll the other thing is, I think, I think you're right that um, what I've learned in my old age of Twitter, because how long we've been going for, like I don't know, about, how long has been going for? Now, about fifteen years or something. Twitter, like that. yeah, Twitter's both, yeah, both that, yeah. Twenty two thousand eight, two thousand nine, it came along. Anyway, um, I, I quite 
recent, I say recently, in the last few years, worked out that you cannot win an argument on Twitter. You cannot, you cannot win you it. You can't argue with idiot Steve. You can't. No, but like, the, the, the thing is, Peter, Twitter, if somebody genu- genuinely, genuinely, I, I live by that, that mantra of you can't argue with an idiot because an idiot doesn't realize when they're beaten. No, I, I, I think like say for us three had a debate over those kits, for instance, and you know, hum, Hummel, like we were talking about there. You can have a reasonable debate. Like, but that's only because we all know each other. Do you know what I mean? And know what each other are. And I, I'm like that on Twitter. Today. There's people who I've never met before who are decent people. But by and large, I don't think you can win an argument on Twitter. I think you can debate and things that are friendly and stuff like that. Like, I've just had, had one then while we were waiting to come back on about this 777 news that's come along. And that's purely friendly and um, not an issue with it. The thing that gets me is when people think they know better. Uh, mm. when, when you know that you yeah. don't. Now, I'm op- open to admit that I don't know, I, mean, I don't know factually about something that I have my own opinion on. Like many of us, I, I think that's something that's quite, probably reflects that you're a decent person if you're willing to accept that people have a different opinion to you. A lot of Twitter's not like that. Um, and yet, yeah, just, I know I'm diving a bit west from the, the question there. But yeah, previously I used to have one. Um, where, like you say there, Peter, just it was good to see things from a different angle. Not just people that have blocked you, but people that like if you are anonymous, you can you can see things and and I don't think I ever necessarily replied because I think people eventually worked out that well I'm not talking to anyone who hasn't got who's completely anonymous because generally people who are anonymous send abuse. Um, and just just don't require any sort of level of intelligence that you should reply to. I was really, I was, really, and Matt Jones, I tell you this, I used to get really personally, like either upset or or in, enraged by people who said things on Twitter, which is the whole reason why I ended up getting a, another account because I thought then you can operate as somebody else, like like what I mentioned there, but obviously in a in a different way where he made himself a wrestler. I'd like to. And I'd still like to do. I'm not not that I would now. I would say my old days. I'm only thirty six, but you know, I wouldn't do it now. But I can understand why people do that and try and refer to themselves and also the ego type of thing. I can get there's probably a psychological thing about that as well, the mentality of doing that, um, because that that thing itself, and I, I don't use it anywhere near as I used to on Twitter because I had reply <clears throat> to absolutely everybody who ever yeah. said anything to me, anything that was like. Um, anything that was retweeted and, and quoted and all. I mean, I used to get, I used to get some real abuse in terms of like I always used to quote tweet people, and I just knew for a fact that it really, really pissed them off. But then my answer to that was, well, why are you saying anything if people can't share it? You're on social media. The whole purpose of it is to have discussion, to to you know, let's say promote debate. If you want to chat to people, that's the whole thing about social media, isn't it? And, People just used to contradict themselves a hell of a lot with it, but um, yeah, I've never. No, I've never. I don't have a porn record. That probably answers the question. <laughs> so what most what, what most people are referring to, yeah. But and I'm, I'm going just just in that. How many people? How many times has it happened when you tweet anything that one of these fucking AI accounts is is like a, a, a it best happened to other people is <clears throat> that there's some weird account that always likes your tweet. Yeah, and it's, it's a poor fucking, bot. It's a poor uh, bot, yeah. yeah, like fucking. You it's know, since uh, since play, Elon's got play, his hands on it. Yeah, since since That's Elon's got his hands on it, it's uh, they're everywhere, yeah. aren't they? So, right, just yeah. just while just while we're talking there, I've just got a bit of breaking news. I've found Clint Class's Twitter account, and uh, he's made two posts. <laughs> they were twenty eight days apart from each other, and the two posts are simply Juice FM. <laughs> so I <laughs> don't know. Juice. I don't know what I was on back in 2016 when this account oh, no, was, was created, but I must have been bored. So anyway, yeah, if you want to give our Clint a follow, he doesn't tweet much and he hasn't got any followers. But um, yeah, if you want to give him a follow, he, he's still there. But God, yeah, I must <laughs> I must have been on a mad one. I really, really would have been. Anyway, listen, <laughs> gonna mo- gonna move on a little bit here because we've got about four questions left, and I want to try and get them in before we um before we call it a day. So uh, here we go. Hang on, just let me load it up here because I've got it. Here we go. Jack Carlisle, he asks, the Blue Room Big Brother, 
who's voted out first and who wins the lot. Because yes, Celebrity Big Brother has made its reappearance on the screens. I haven't watched the second of it, by the way. I haven't. But um, yeah, Blue Room Big Brother, Pete, who's voted out first, who wins the lot? I see. I think personally, I think I'd be all right early, early doors, but I think I'd just lose interest like after about a week and just end up being in bed all the time. So I'd be one of them who sort of peaks too early. So I think I'd be all right for the first like couple of days, and then I'd end up just like getting totally bored of the whole thing and and just as I say staying in bed all the time. Um, I think, I think David get kept in for the uh, the controversy. I think David be the one who who would be staring up the pot. Um. I think that he's yeah. I think like he come out with some... from back in the day. Well, <laughs> I, no, I was thinking more like when George Galloway was on his hands and knees doing the pussycat thing. Do you know what I mean? I was, I, th- I think that I think that 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 would be Dave's style. Do you know what I mean? Um, I'd love to see y- your exit. Equi- um, what do you call it? You know, your costume that you're oh, leaving as well, David. Your eviction like costume, be... yeah. Yeah, that that'd be who's that'd who's be who's something who's to behold. <laughs> so we like a massive cat. Yeah, yeah, in, the, in leathers. Um, and then I think who, who do we think? If we're going like like all time, I think I think Sarah Halpern would be in with a shelf to win. Oh, you know, shelf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, if we've got to get the um, Laura, it'd be a, would would be good. I think. Um, would who would have who would have the, the first bust up? Do you reckon who who would end up having mm. like the. You know, like the or or the one who'd like start throwing throwing like dishes everywhere. I, I, I don't want to say. I, I reckon, I, I, reckon of... I got. I'd, I reckon I did the roof early doors. Like, I, yeah. I, 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 I'm quite. Um, I, I, when I when I sort of critique myself, I, I feel like I'm, I'm, you know, I'm all right company. I'm, you know, I'm all right to be around. I, I feel like I'm a fairly decent lad, but I think when yeah. certain things are not done the way I like them. I'll I, I get a bit aggrieved, should yeah. we say. So I think I'd be one of them that'd lash out, not mean to, but I'd lash out and then I'd be seen as like the the awkward one or the the argumentative one. Um so I think you'd probably be seeing at me for staying in bed all the time, wouldn't you? You'd be I, like, yeah, why, 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 like why, why aren't you getting out of bed? I I'd, I'd do it in work, you know, when people leave like a cup out by the sink, like just tidy oh, yeah, and put that. it away. That'd be me, and I get I get wound up, and then like little things that other things wind me up. So Dave, me and you out week one eviction for the public votes. What are we saying? First eviction, we're saying. First eviction, me. He's not going out in the first eviction. First eviction. I'll go with then. That's really really tough. That you know. I'll go. Um, I tell you, I tell you, just before, just while you're thinking of that, I tell you who's winning it. Maggie's winning it. Maggie's winning it, and I think Matt Jones is the runner up. I think Matt Jones does goes the whole way as well. No, 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 no. Matt, Matt would go, <clears throat> Matt would go and sort of mid mid table. I think Matt I think... because he's so he's so laid back in person. Matt is so laid back, and I think that at the start he'll be great because he's just chilled out. But then people get a bit sick of him because he's not fucking ripped. Just just lost it. Do you know what I mean? I'm, I'm going to and... ask you something here, Dave, because you you know the fella better than I do. I've only met him a couple of times and been on the odd show with him. But how's Paddy Boylan doing? Because Paddy seems to get a bit of stick off you lot. Uh, yeah, he, he, I love the bones of Paddy. I love them, and I'm gutted I don't see him. Well, I barely see him. Uh, I haven't seen him for ages. In fact, in person, um, Paddy. Uh, because I mean, initially when we had the Blue Room start, obviously. I built it, and then Matt come along. We we sort of like a, a few weeks later, me and him started building it, and then Paddy. There was like three of us. Paddy was a once the director of us actually, and then when he got his amazing career that he's got now, as one of the country's greatest writers, um, obviously he had to part ways with that side of things. Um, I, he's hilarious. He's so so funny. I don't know why I'm completely bigging him up here, but he's got a dark side to him. <laughs> in many different ways. I mean, he's the one I'd like to ask a question of an alternative um, Twitter account first as well, because I, I have no doubt he has several of them. Um, Paddy, Paddy would be out. I think he'd be out early doors. I yeah, do think so, he'd be out early doors. I mean, I I, 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 I don't know him, as I say, that well as you yeah. do, but, but just from what you said... Paddy, Paddy would have the athletic behind him, though, wouldn't he? Wouldn't he have, like, yeah. he, he, they, they'd be doing All his car for him, wouldn't he? Yeah, all the votes as well. I, I'm going to yeah. change though. I, I think I'd go. Les is going to go all the way. Les is I a think, great yeah. shout for all the way. Yeah, yeah. 
I think yeah. I think Les is uh, housewives favorite. Oh, Popular master, with the lads, he'd be, he'd be, yeah, Sam with the girls. Right, yeah, yeah. Les is he's the, the yeah. type. Of, he's the type of fella who like you know someone to pick as the horse he wanted on the Grand National. He's he's yeah. definitely like that. Um, I, yeah, I, I think, don't know I why. Think, I, think, I, think, I, don't, I don't even know if that makes sense. What I was just said there about him. I think I think Les, we're, put Les up there, top Les, um, Laura, Maggie. I think because he normally have these days or used to. He'd have like a final five, wouldn't he? Or like, he yeah. just like kept adding more people on. Les, so go, Laura, if... Maggie, Matt. That's what I'm going for. It's the final four. No, I'd I'd throw you in there. Um, you'd be in my final four. I think Matt will have gone. I'm going you, Les, Laura. Uh, uh, the final one. Um, Mosey, Mark Mosey. Mose, yeah, Moses is a great yeah. shout. Moses yeah, great they're, shout. they're my final four. Um, and I think in the end, Les wins it. Les wins it. Yeah, I think we're agreed on that. I didn't really... Do you know what? That That's a quintessential mailbag question. And I'm going to go from one it's quintessential... Big Going question. from one one quintessential mailbag question to another. I really like this question. This is from LGK. Uh, uh, Liam, I believe your name is. Liam says, I am currently playing the remastered Tomb Raider trilogy, which I'm jealous about, by the way. He says, it got me thinking, the cuffing aside, what is the most, what is the thing about Everton in the 90s you would most like to see return and happen again? That's Chumba a great question. Chumba Wumba. Chumba. Chumba Wumba, yeah, that's back. a great question. That, yeah, it's not Everton related, though, is it? Or is it's it not Everton related? Well, it, it, says, it, says, it says Everton related, but here we go. We'll go one thing Everton related, and we'll go one thing culture, culture related to this question. Well, like, so, Chumba Wumba is my Everton related because like, we used to play before every game. And it was, do you remember when, Kad- when Kadamati first broke through? Yeah, it was like yeah. that bit where it was, oh, Danny boy. Right, you know, yeah, bit, yeah, 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 fight, yeah. And then it was, I get knocked down. But I get up again. I, I love that song. What can I say? And is is the is the lyrics to it? I'm pissing the night away. Yeah, but they they, they yeah. said it wasn't because they wanted to get it played <laughs> over radio without it being there. Uh, oh really? Uh, so yeah, it's like yeah. pissing the night away or something. Yeah, yeah. 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 But um, yeah. what I bring back from the nineties uh, are footy stickers. Um, used to adore footy stickers, collecting them. Um, I'd have still any, going then. Like, they were temp I know, yeah, but they're not like the mailing ones. Proper not like the old mail school, yeah. anymore. The mailing ones. And obviously you get I think you pay like a fiver, something like that, and you get the album with like a ten pack. And I remember there used to be ten P for a pack of stickers, and you get like seven or eight. You used to absolutely buzz it when you got a shiny. And like I remember my mum picked me up from me. Uh, from junior school, and we go across uh, Nosley Road. People don't know that it's the front bootle again. Going down Nosley Road, there and go in the shop, and I go in and I'd, like she'd give me like three quid or something like for the weekend, and I'd go in there and she'd flip it because I'd spend it all on my footy stickers. Yeah. <laughs> and it got to a stage here, and I know I'm going off on um, on a bit of nostalgia here, but I filled the album because a lot of people just collected them and didn't even use the album; they just collected yeah. them for stacks of them. And you used to be able to go to Anfield and you could swap your, your you tickets. Could swap, couldn't you? Could. Yeah. They had a massive one that, one year that... when I remember when I was a kid, they had just... a massive one at Everton. Uh, Everton yeah, that's um, right. Sports Centre, Everton Park Sports Centre. They had yeah. a big, big, bad thing. Massive teeth. No, that, you should have banned that because you'd have to properly get them here, like Pokemon cards. You'd have to proper, proper get them. Um, and I remember <laughs> it was when uh, Neil Ruddock was at West Ham and he was the only one I needed to get Neil Ruddock and he used to find didn't you that when, when you got packs of them you get someone about 18 times you're like why yeah. why can't you just change this but obviously there was a market inside of it mine um, was Robert Ullathorne at Norwich Robert Ullathorne at Norwich used to, Rob Ullathorne at Norwich used to always get him <laughs> in my pack always I was on him do you remember that fella who became Bristol Palace's manager while he was playing and oh Dan, it's uh, Neil yeah, I needed him. I needed him yeah. a lot. Um, shinies used to go quite quickly. <clears throat> I remember the crap ones where the, the massive shiny used to get for like the middle, the middle pages of the, the album. Yeah. But I, I promise you, I've got it somewhere. I'll try and get it out. The 97, 98 season, I filled up, mm. um, and I, like I treated it like it was just stunning. Gold. I used to keep it everywhere. Oh mate, yeah, wanted to put it on the mantelpiece and all of this, and then um, 
you know, when you grow up, you quickly remember that it's valued at about a quid. But you paid, <laughs> you paid about 200 quid to get all the season tickets. Yeah. So there's that. I suppose that's sort of Everton related because obviously you'd obsess over R1. If you got if you got Everton, if you got like Paul Rideout or something like that in your pack of cards, you'd be buzzing, absolutely buzzing. Um, so I, I did, that's a bit of nostalgia there from the 90s. Everton related. Um, I remember my first game that I ever went to. We got battered two, I said battered. We got lost two nil. It was Newcastle season after the should have won the league. Um, I remember going into Goodison and in Gladys Street, and that day will always like that'll stick in my mind. That was the one of the best days in my life is going into Goodison, and also at the start of a season. It seems to happen every season. The weather is amazing. If mm. if we're playing first day of August, like it used to be, obviously all over the place now, isn't it? They have three or four games on a Saturday. Three o'clock kickoff on a Saturday afternoon in August. In my memory, it always seemed to be awesome. the weather was stunning. It was red hot. You'd be walking up from County Road. Um, I remember it went there uh, for my first game was that 2-0 defeat. And I remember saying to my dad, we went to a few games when we were shit, obviously. I remember saying to me, Dad, are we ever going to win a game? Because we went like half a dozen games. And the first one I ever went to when Everton won a game, we beat Nottingham Forest 3-0. I think Dunk scored two, at least two of them, on the Gladys Street. Like, I remember turning to me, Dad, going, oh, we're going to win the league now. We've won a game. We're going to win the league. <laughs> so they're, they're my two nostalgic moments there from uh, the 90s. Do you know, for me, if I could bring back a couple of uh, ones, one sort of event related, but not. But I heard just talking about it the other week, and to not bring back memories, bring back the pink, bring back the pink after the match. Oh, uh, the pink and Oh, the pink echo, yeah, yeah. Teletext as well. That, Teletext. You know what? When I used to, when I used, to, when I was a kid and I first went, it used to be um, you you'd leave after the match and. Whoever I was with, I'd have a quick pint or whatever, and only the Winslow or whatever. And then it'd be get the pink chippy tea and a can of Dandelion and Birds. Oh, that was my Saturday evening, and it was oh, glory days. And then, do you remember now? This might this might get a few people going here. Do you remember in the 90s, and I want to say early 2000s, when it might have shut down by then? Do you remember Soccer City in Bold Street? The shop. Used to be, yeah, I do, yeah, 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 yeah. To, I think, I think it was, yeah. I've probably been there, yeah. I think it was called Soccer City, but anyway, it was a it was a shop in the halfway down Bold Street near the sort of where yeah. Central is, and you'd walk in. These have every shirt, every tracksuit, anything to do with football was in there, and it was like if you yeah. were football obsessed like I was, it was like walking into like. Aladdin's cave yeah. football. There was yeah. the yeah. they had everything. And back then, I don't know if it's I don't know if it was a thing or it was just me, but back then I used to collect shirts of other teams. And weirdly, I had like other Premier League teams, but I also had um I had the Barcelona early nineties home kit. Yeah, I yeah, had, yeah. Um, I had a couple of goalkeepers' kits from abroad, can't remember them. But I remember once I was with my mum and uh, it was coming up to my birthday, and we walked in, she went, get what you want. And I remember getting the new Everton kit, and I remember getting the um, it was the. Do you remember the the nine the I, I Kinchelskis wore it, but it was the the away kit, Danka with the grey and the white, and the little bit of like yeah, that's right, the yeah, bit of yeah. Sort of. I that had, was ninety six, I, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I had that, and then I remember getting um a set. I, I, for some reason, I wanted to be a goalkeeper. I had the Sondico goalkeeping gloves, the Peter Sondico, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I thought, I thought I was, I thought I was just brilliant. And I think I had an Ajax track suit as well. But this was back when, and I don't know if it's what, still can, what, what one did you say then? Ajax, What's and Ajax, 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 yeah, yeah. track suit, yeah. And I don't know if it's still a thing now with kids or not. But back then, um. It was a bit of a thing to wear like a foreign club's tracksuit or massively, yeah, kit, yeah, yeah. And yeah. I, I just used to have loads of them. I've lost a load of them now, but I've still got some of my old Everton kits. But yeah, Soccer City, I'd love to have back. And then just as a general nineties thing, I know it's a bit cliche, but nothing better than going into Blockbuster, picking a video out, picking yeah. some oh, yeah. and going over. Yeah. I mean, that was just that was just nineties. It sums up that was. But yeah, what, oh, what an cool era. One as well, what yeah. a, it was yeah, so it was so and so. It was something so exciting yeah. about going into into Blockbuster, wasn't it? It's it was a smell. It felt like an atmosphere when you walked yeah. in Blockbuster. Because everything's so accessible now on your Netflix, your Disney Plus, your yeah, Prime, yeah, yeah, all yeah. that. There was something like about where you can only rent one video a week on your Blockbuster card. So you had to wait another week before you could get another film. And yeah. 
There was just yeah. something so pure and so exciting about They'd it. They'd be mad now... if he didn't take it back on time, though. No. You get yeah, and and oh God, like the, fa- the fines are double, wouldn't he, each day and all yeah, that? But yeah, yeah, insane. Just go yeah. back to what you said there, don't make that that pink echo. I was saying last week, I yeah, I yeah, found it yeah. unbelievable how quickly they got it out. Dave, because... when you think when you think about the technology, because I mean, obviously, unbelievable obviously now. Obviously, now with the apps, the match reports are out within. 15, 20 yeah. minutes, aren't they? But when you think now to actually go to type that match report up, get it to the printer and get it out by yeah. what? Six o'clock sometimes, wasn't it? Or eight Easy. Earlier. And, you know, it used to get out that quickly. There are a couple of the games, a couple of the three, um, the three o'clock kickoffs. Yeah. It just obviously... But you'd have like a headline and written stuff. And yeah. you get it to you so quick, even if you got it delivered. I don't know what the... Um, the, the paper boys are doing, and they were on whippets or uh, something like that. They, for, they are on both heads and getting up. But you remember, listening, for those sorry, Dave, for those listening who are a bit younger, the pink was a it was a we didn't have obviously smartphones and all that back then, and it was a pink that the the echo uh come out, the sports echo come out like pretty much instantly after the game, didn't it? So, and you could read yeah. about all the results of the weekend, but the one Mad. I always remember. It was front page of the pink, and we beat Chelsea four two at home in ninety three. And Brett Angel scored. I think it was his only goal for Everton. And it was a still, <laughs> pic- it was a still picture of him sliding in and scoring the goal from like a yard or two out. That was the one I remember having with me Dandy Lana Bird off. Well, go on, Dave. Yeah, you were saying about. I'd it. love to. I'd love to uh, interview people who sorted this out. You know, be some like former. When I have a chat with Phil McNulty, actually, where there he must would be, be someone. There must be yeah. someone out there who, and just, who we can, who we just can ask, speak like, to the, about. The, the yeah. mechanism, the mechanism, how they got it out so quickly. But just, just a quick one on that with the um, the games would be on the back page, mm. and they put it out that quick that some of them hadn't quite finished yet. Yeah, so they say put one like, nil, the, one nil after seventy seven yeah, minutes or L, something, wouldn't they? Put L in brackets next to it. Yeah. It's still the latest score by the time they got it out. Those were the days then. Do you know what as well, and and, and you, you can't do this really anymore. You, if you, you, the only way you could do it is if you literally sat in a room, dark room, and put all your phones and everything away. But I used to love, um, if I'd gone the game and only seen the Everton score, not listening to all the other scores because you couldn't have access on your phone or whatever, and wait until yeah, match yeah, of the day yeah. was on, and then watch watch match of the day, and you didn't know what the scores were. So you'd see all the scores as they come in. You've got to be that committed a... to that, though. You know, that was hard way. Now. That... Yeah, you, you no. can't do it nowadays. Anyway, listen, final few questions. Um, We've got two more. So I'm going to go with Stuart. Stuart Guys first. He says, as it's only male pe- peacocks that have the brightly coloured plumage, <laughs> who, is, <laughs> who, who in the current or recent Everton past is prime peacock strutting material? Dave. <laughs> oh, what a question this is following last week. Yeah. Um, somebody who struts it around. Former or present, did he say? It says current or recent Everton past. Yeah. Current, current, no doubt to me, is Onana. I yeah. think Onana moves around that football pitch like he's, <clears throat> he's you know, he's like gold, he's got golden feet. Um, I, I think that fella bag bag for the talent as we've spoken about previously loads of times. But you can just tell that lad and I've only just gone on to it recently. He's I think he's primed and desperate for Evan to just be a stepping stone to a big club or to a Champions League club. Well from what and... you've read, from what I've read, he's claims are that he said no I'm willing to stay and fight for now before I move on. So yeah, exactly. I, I just, I, you know, I, I think it's inevitable for certain players that go to certain clubs that there, there are any a stepping stone. That's why you see such so much of a, a <clears throat> distance between the top six, if you like, to everybody else. Because players, were regardless where they originally start, they want to their ambition. Maybe quite naturally in many ways, and maybe that's why they're good at what they do. Want to get to the highest level of playing football. There's no denial about that. But in terms of the question initially about like what someone looks like a peacock who's strutting, strutting around. I think that lad uh, is is top of that list for me. I think you can see it all the time. I think even when he gets the ball, you can see it. Um, not I'm not gonna. I, I don't want to criticize his level of commitment to us, but it's all that you know when he gets to the fans of the Gladys, and I think it's really pretend. And I feel like I can see right through that. And if you tell me that a club come in. This summer, given the financial situation we had, said, I'll give you the same price as you paid for that lad. I reckon he'd be gone in a shot. 
I think he'd just yeah, take think his Evan, kit off and run down there naked. I think Evan will be looking to make money on him, but I think that's the way oh, we've got to be. You know, so. I think we, we, we've we've got but to bring players. Do you definitely get money for him now? Well, we've, 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 we've get money. We've got to bring. We've got to. We've got to go down that model now, haven't we? Where we, where we bring yeah. young players in and sell them on, hopefully for a profit, and then redo and try and build a squad. But you definitely we'd still get what we paid for them. Um, I don't think we get. Yeah, I think we would. I think we we're going to have to because we've got a twenty percent sell-on fee. For, uh, yeah, I think, yeah, I think, I think we would. I think we'd at least cover that. I mean, for me, in in a, in a different way, um, the, the the peacock's shutting around at the minute, Brantwaite, because I tell you what, he just looked like he he looked like he glides on that pitch at the minute. He's, you he's, mean that in a positive way, though? Yeah, he he just he just he's he's massive. He's just great. He's just great. And I know we're not yeah. going to have him for long, but uh, yeah, he's a mag- what a magnificent player he is, Pete. Yeah. Who are you going for? Are we talking like in the po- Tommy Gravison? Tommy Gravison used to, used to sort of strut around, didn't he? Yeah. He used to have like yeah. a bit of a, a bit of bit of something about him. A bit more um, of a hard man type of way, that, isn't it? There's a positive and a negative. There's a positive and a negative to this, isn't there? Yeah, you're like, right. You can, you're right. Yeah. You can have you can have like your flair players who strut around and do magic stuff with the yeah. ball. You can have like you describe Dave a little bit of a probably think they're better than they are type of strut. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Go on, Pete. Tommy yeah, Gravison. I, 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 well, I, th- I think Gravison had like that sort of. You say he was a hard man, but he, he didn't used to tackle. He used to sort, of, he used to go in and look like he was really ready to tackle. But yeah. then he never, he, but then he'd end up just like sticking his toe in. Do you know what I mean? He, he never mm. like really went through and and gave someone a proper kick. And so I think a lot of it was for show. A lot, a lot of this like this thing yeah. about him being a, being. I actually think he was a he was more a flair player than he was a than he was yeah, a, yeah. a destroyer. Yeah. And I think that's why Real Madrid. When he went to Real Madrid, they, they signed the wrong player, didn't they? Because he they signed Gravison. Cars, they, didn't he? he was cars, he was doing that job that they wanted to. There's no the, way that's true. There's no, no way the, that's true. No, but that's the type of what it what, what Pete's saying. Is oh, sorry, type, yeah, I got what you mean. The, yeah. They thought he was like, a destroyer when he wasn't. Yeah. Gravison. So they wanted they, they wanted basically they what they wanted him to play in the Lee Carsley position, not realizing that actually that wasn't his position. He yeah. was actually the flair of the two rather than the destroyer. So I think I think Tommy Gravison, yeah. De- yeah. Delafeu as well was a bit peacockish in a good way because I loved Jerry, really did. But with the hair yeah. and the skills and all that, very very uh, show offy and in a good way, in a good way. Listen, we've only got uh, just over four minutes, so I'm gonna I'm gonna um, ask you to keep this final question, the answers to it quite short. But again, I like this another mailbag type question from Stephen. Stephen she she and Stephen asks if you could try anything without consequences. What would it be, Dave? Oh, robbing a bank. I, it just, you know, that's it. You sort yourself out, don't you? Simple as that, really. Robbing a bank, or um, yeah, I'm just going to stick with robbing a bank. Here. I think it's really simple. Sort your life out. Happy days. Then you're gone, aren't you? You can do whatever you like. So that that's a simple one for me. Heath. Yeah, I, I'd, I'd go, I'd go along with something like that because there's no no consequences, as in like. No one would be getting hurt. Banks probably insured as well. You know, they, they, they're probably insured <laughs> against that sort of thing. Do you know what I mean? Um, as long as we could do it on the quiet, so that no one in the in the bank got hurt. And I, I joined Dave, me and Dave, on a in a consequence free uh, bank heist. <laughs> I'd love to go. I mean, I've I've done it once and I had to come down. You're not even a quarter of the way up because my legs just started turning to jelly because I'm terrified of heights. But on the Eiffel Tower, I'd love to go to the top. And drop a pound coin and just see what happened when it landed. That'd kill someone, yeah. wouldn't it? Well, of course that it would, would yeah, someone. but that's what I mean. I'd love to see what happened without consequences, just it landing on the floor, what kind of dent it would make or where did it end up? Because surely through that height and the distance it's going, it have, you know, completely drift off somewhere. Um, and yeah. I'd love to be able to, I'd love to be able to do that. I mean Safely though. Safe. Safely, of course, yeah, without consequences. I mean that's the, that's the quickest there's, thing there's I can a, There's a thing about terminal velocity, isn't there? There's a yeah. thing about that where it's terminal it'd velocity. Swear, it? It'd swear. Yeah, yeah, possibly, possibly <clears throat> something like that, or you know, like jump, jump from it and land safely, or something, and just see, you know, yeah. like you can do on the GTA games, or get the parachute out and land somewhere, something like that, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but listen, we're we're, we're going to leave it there, and uh, I just want to say again, thank you so much, Dave, for having me on host, and really enjoyed it. Yeah, thank, you every, thank you to everyone. Thank you to everyone. 
Thank you to everyone with the questions they sent in. Some really good questions this week, particularly some of the last few we've had, which I, I really love it when we do mailbag and there's these really random questions that you've just <laughs> got, to, you've got to give stupid answers to. I think that's what makes the show. Yeah. And obviously the ones about the England flag, we had a great you know, conversation about that in the first part. So all that's left for me to say, oh, sorry, we're one minute left just while I've remembered. Pete, big game tomorrow. Women's Merseyside derby. Sell it to us, because not that we need selling, but tell us about it anyway. Yeah, Merseyside Derby, we've uh, beaten them three times on the bounce at Anfield. Drew against them last season at Goodison Park. We owe them one. Get down to Goodison Park. Support yeah, our amazing, uh, amazing Everton women. And, and Pete's done a fantastic interview this week at Goodison uh, about the Derby. <laughs> so if you get a chance, please watch that. It's absolutely brilliant what Pete's done. And, and again, Pete, you know, credit to you for the time you, you give to the women's team and the support and backing and promotion you do of it. So, yeah, big game for the Everton ladies tomorrow. Up the Gales tomorrow. Hope they, hope they win it. Hope they absolutely batter them because they've got a great record against them. So, good luck to them. Uh, we'll all be watching. And, yeah, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Have a great weekend, everyone listening. Thanks for your questions again, and we'll see you next week on Mailbag. <laughs>